Hi everybody, my name is Mary. Uh, I've been working with Deb on producing these new resources and I'm going to take you through into agritourism and then a, a short session on a sense of place which I must say I'm a little bit reluctant to start talking about because Nick set the scene so very well so there'll be things there that I, I don't need to say twice. So what is agritourism? Well it's simply the partnership between tourism and agriculture and in so many instances, there have been wonderful examples of a symbiotic relationship and educational experiences um, that have just formed naturally. They're not necessarily set out to be educational, but by nature of what they, what they are, um, that's what happens. So agritourism is a well-established feature on the continent. Uh, we're still developing our agricultural sector here. And pre-pandemic, there were over 20,000 established businesses on the continent working in the agritourism agri sector. Leaders are um, Italy and uh, France and Spain. And examples of where this has benefited the local area, so not only the businesses, but you've seen, especially in Italy, where there's been tremendous movement out of the countryside and in, into the cities, agritourism has seen um, as many tiny locations being um, repopulated businesses and uh, buildings such as this, this is a 16th century barn are still in use and they've been repaired and uh, renovated as well as uh, reintroducing historic skills and heritage uh, crops as well so there are there are many benefits I still haven't got this right so it's a moving feast so uh, if you haven't heard of um, diddly squat this is um, aspiring farmer Jeremy Clarkson who has made inroads uh, in the last few years as he has um, diversified away from driving fast cars um, to becoming a farmer and he operates in the Cotswolds A and O and B so they have similar restraints and or constraints I should say and he he put in a planning application um, to develop a restaurant on his farm which was turned down by the local planning uh, council. And it's an interesting, I included it today because it's an interesting example of a, di a dynamic situation. He's actually reapplied, they've made the changes. But what had happened was the, the local community were not particularly happy with the huge influx of cars and people and non-existent traffic management and visitor management because people were very keen to buy his potatoes. It was the only thing he had to sell in his shop but people went along to buy some of his potatoes because I think they wanted some of his pixie dust um, that, that he spreads. The converse was that the, the businesses who were aiming to supply into his restaurant were very unhappy with the planning application because there was a baker who was hoping to supply baked goods, there was a dairy farmer, there were locals who were hoping to be employed and to work on the farm. He's since uh, made adjustments uh, to, to the application, it's gone back in. I'm sure he will get it, I think it will be an asset for that community. But there's a delicate balance between inviting people into an area that maybe is not quite ready, or the host community hasn't been consulted uh, in something that you're trying to do. No matter how noble the cause. So closer to home, we've heard that, um, so it's over 70% of the Kent uh, Downs is farmed, so I won't go into um, what what that looks like because Nick described that very well. But to say that within this environment, there's a huge opportunities for those business managers and owners who have the appetite to take on something new to diversify, because farming can't carry on sort of ploughing the same old furrow um, as it always has. There are huge pressures on the land from people coming in. Brexit has introduced huge challenges as well. So for, it's not for everybody, it's not for every business, but if you've got the appetite or possibly the young, a younger generation working on your farm who has new ideas, this might be something for you. It's important because it favors small scale production. So you don't have to be big. You can be incredibly niche. If you want to be making something that you, your market is very small, but you're making it very well, it's a heritage uh, crop or, or a heritage skill, there will be a market uh, for that. Integration with uh, environment and local culture, well that goes without uh, saying it's a good way into that, provided it's, it's done well and the offer is authentic um, and it's looking at rural heritage uh, and culture. 
It enhances a sense of place, which I'll go on to talk about in a second, and you've heard from Deb about the sustainability benefit it brings. Added value, new routes to market. So for existing products, there can be new markets for you, uh, or there could be new, new products for existing markets. Complementary income, uh, I think that's, um, that's straightforward too. Um, protection of heritage crops we've mentioned, and sustainable relationships, community, host communities are very important, and the customer. And for the farmer who likes to get out and about and, and meet and be with, with their customers, it's a good way of doing that. From farm to fork is the most, with the most recognised benefit of this uh, endeavour. Where does our food come from? How is it grown? And one of the things that um, Diddley Squat, actually, and Jeremy Clarkson has done for the agriculture sector is increase awareness amongst a, a viewing uh, population who know nothing about um, farming life and life in, in a rural destination. Why would they? So that's of, of benefit. So strong appeal farming experiences in the family market uh, with, with young children, um, showing them where, where our food comes from and the interaction with animals and life on the farm. It's probably the most good entry point into the countryside. If you're not from the countryside, if you don't live in the countryside, it's a scary place. You don't know what to expect. You don't know, are the locals friendly? Can I do this? Can I do that? Am I going to get lost? And is there somewhere for me to stay? Because increasingly, we all need to get out of the urban, our urban lives and into the rural uh, countryside. And of course, with, our, with the community, um, the key thing is around uh, collaboration with any development. And the community can benefit. Jeremy Clarkson said the pub is busy, the local post office is busy. Um, there are local, the, the farm shops are, are busy because he, he's bringing people in. Um, I know there'll be different views on that. And there's also opportunities for volunteering. So, got a couple of uh, case studies here. So why community farm? Um, they're a, a local um, community farm and they focus on uh, wool and they're developing uh, new experiences. I was talking um, earlier and um, their diversification opportunity is developing a, a U to you. So that's E-W-E to you experience where customers can get closer um, to, the, to the sheep, learn about uh, new skills and um, making some, some new products. Apologies for the spelling mistake, but that's Chilton Farm B&B. They're form, former uh, dairy tenant farmers um, who, have, uh, who are developing a number of countryside experiences in addition to their new uh, Flint B&B, um, &B, Flint um, style B&B. &B. And uh, they're looking at introducing guided uh, countryside walks and foraging in their local woodlands. And uh, this Art of Mind studio, uh, they're on a commercial farm, but they offer extensive art uh, art classes um, and craft making and uh, Beachborough Park uh, they've got 90 acres I believe of uh, countryside a stately home um, and they're also looking at diversifying offering accommodation and interactive um, activities on there